Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Bed Surgery Addicts. So sorry, first of all, because I am uploading video after a very very long time. I was actually on web. Okay. So let us go with our uh, the lecture series, the radiology series, okay, interpretation of radiographs. Let us go to the class directly. Before going to the class, small request, if you are liking the content of this channel, if you are getting benefited from this channel, do subscribe to this channel, okay, and uh, share with your friends and uh, juniors and colleagues. So we will be discussing different organs, okay. Uh, I have already made two videos. First one is the normal abdominal uh, radiograph interpretation and also normal thoracic radiograph interpretation. Okay, if you haven't watched that video, please go that watch that video, especially the abdominal radiograph interpretation video. Okay, about dog and cat because from today we will be discussing the organs present in the abdomen and their uh, pathological conditions. Okay, I will be following the book, the Thrall's Veterinary Diagnostic Radiology, and I have. Uh, taken the picture from that book also if you want an elaborate study you can refer that book also okay but after this class we may not need to study those books but books are books it is the place where you will get much more knowledge than a class actually but you should know some basics from the class then you will follow the book and you will get good knowledge so today we will be uh, discussing the pathologies of peritoneal space liver and uh, spleen although three organs is there or uh, peritoneum is not an actually an organ but peritoneal space will discuss the organs also some organs under liver and spleen under liver also we will study the gallbladder also okay so first of all we will study the peritoneal space first some anatomy okay before going to any radiology you should know some basic anatomies okay so peritoneum has two layers peritoneum has two layers one is parietal peritoneum another one is the visceral peritoneum parietal peritoneum usually adheres to the abdominal wall okay this is the parietal peritoneum which adheres to the abdominal wall especially the abdominal abdominal musculature okay and the visceral peritoneum is the peritoneum which uh, covers the internal organs you see this is visceral peritoneum which covering the spleen and here this is the visceral peritoneum which is covering the liver okay so between this peritoneum that is the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum the space is known as peritoneal space usually it contains some little amount of fluid for a lubrication okay so the organs which lies inside the peritoneum see this is the whole peritoneum inside the peritoneum is known as the organs are known as intraperitoneal organ okay intraperitoneal organ almost measure of the most of the organs are intraperitoneal like spleen stomach liver okay the intestines small intestines the large intestines those are intraperitoneal organs there will be some organs which will reside outside the peritoneum or you can say for these structures like kidney only the uh, ventral part is lined by peritoneum not whole organ these organs especially the kidney the caudal vena cava the aorta they are retroperitoneal retro peritoneal retro peritoneal now you should know about some ligaments they are also important these peritoneums at some points form some double membrane folds or ligaments okay so these ligaments are important because these ligaments actually hold the organ in place suppose uh, let us take the example of falciform ligament okay fl falciform ligament so this falciform ligament attaches the liver okay here srl is uh, spleno renic renal ligament gsl gastrosplenic ligament there is also duodeno colic ligament so by this name you can say that the stomach is fixed its uh, at its place by omentum lesser omentum and greater omentum so these ligaments make sure that the organs are fixed 
at that position okay so almost all organs especially the intraperitoneal organs are fixed except the jejunum and ileum especially the jejunum jejunum ileum although ileum is kind of fixed but the most important is jejunum okay because the you i will when we will be interpreting the position of this jejunum specially will tell you that which organ is actually affected okay we will see how this jejunum decides jejunum is only attached by the mesentery okay it does not have any other ligament to attach to or to make its place fixed another important thing between these folds okay that ligaments or mesentery mesentery also a double membrane peritoneal layer if something suppose some fat also if lies between these folds they are also retroperitoneal they are not inside the peritoneum okay they are between those folds that means they are retroperitoneal especially in cats you will find the falciform fat we will see the radiogram those are retroperitoneal okay mesenteric fat those are retroperitoneal mesenteric lymph nodes between those folds you will find lymph nodes they are also retroperitoneal okay so now you have understood the normal anatomy and one more thing due to this specific arrangement there are two cavities this cavity is known as peritoneal cavity and the organs which reside in the retroperitoneal retroperitoneal space the retroperitoneal cavity so when you will be telling that abdominal cavity abdominal cavity means it includes both retroperitoneal and the peritoneal cavity okay abdominal cavity is not equal to peritoneal cavity remember this one okay now let us go to our some pathologies see first some normal also you will see what i am telling you before going that you should know some opacities i have already discussed opacities in the i think in the thoracic radiograph class but you should know uh, for refreshment of your mind there are different type of opacity you see this lungs this is completely black this is air opacity after the air opacity can you see this one okay this is some opacity some type of opacity this is fat opacity here there will be retroperitoneal fat this is fat opacity okay you can identify this is kidney kidney is a soft tissue so this is soft tissue opacity okay this is fat opacity this is soft tissue opacity after soft tissue opacity you will find the bone opacity this is bone opacity after bone opacity you will find the uh, mineral opacity or you can say metal opacity okay that is completely white okay so these are different type of opacity because you know radiograph everything is black and white and shades of gray so you have to identify those organs between those shades of gray so you should know different type of opacity here i want to show you the retroperitoneal and the peritoneal cavity this is a an x ray of cat you will find the falciform fat here falciform fat is also retroperitoneal here this is the retroperitoneal cavity this is retroperitoneal cavity okay and here rest are peritoneal cavity this is peritoneal cavity okay so abdominal cavity means the peritoneum as well as retroperitoneal cavity okay and here identify some organs also this is very normal thing here is the bladder this is bladder this is descending colon transverse colon and the ascending colon okay this is kidney the cranial one is the right kidney and the caudal one the left kidney okay here can you see a triangular piece this structure this structure is nothing but this spleen this is the head of the spleen okay and here is the stomach this is pylorus this small one is the pylorus this is liver okay in case of cat the tail of the spleen is not usually uh, visualized under radiograph normal survey radiograph if it, it is at all visualized then there is some pathology okay we will discuss the spleen also so this is the normal thing in case of cat let us see a dog's x ray also in dogs you won't find a falciform fat okay here can you see this is the liver here is the liver sorry sir here is the liver and you won't find much of the falciform fat here is the spleen okay see these structures have a distinct margin this is known as sharp margin 
okay the visualization organ is also known as serosal detail how well you are differentiating between the organs is known as serosal detail okay here it is the stomach like this this is pylorus here okay this is retroperitoneal space here is the retroperitoneal space you will find the kidney and can you find a small piece here like triangular like this is spleen head of the spleen this is tail of the spleen this is tail this is head in dogs spleen is normally visible in the radiographs both sometimes head visible most of the time the tails will tail of spleen will be visible okay but in not in case of cat remember this point when i will discussing the splenomegaly you will know that now let us go to the pathology peritoneum has very uh, less pathologies okay the most important one is peritoneal effusion okay sometimes you tell them as ascites peritoneal effusion peritoneal in peritoneal effusion you may find different degrees of fluid accumulation whether it is small amount moderate amount and the large amount of fluid so when there will be small amount of fluid sorry small amount of fluid accumulation the characteristics x ray is known as you know, the characteristics will be the abdominal organs will be hazy or mottled hazy or mottled you see here what is hazy and mottled here you can identify some organs okay, like here this is the part of liver okay here is part of some spleen tail of the spleen but the margins is actually not that clear see the liver margin is not that clear there is some border replacement with different organs though you may find some intestinal loops which you can see but actually you can't see the border this is known as hazy or mottled type radiograph okay so you will find this one in small amount of when there will be small amount of fluid present inside the peritoneum okay the most common cause of the peritoneal effusion is peritonitis peritonitis another thing i would like to mention that this type of hazy or mottled appearance is also you will also find in case of pancreatitis pancreatitis especially in this mid abdomen you see up to the liver that is beyond this side will be cranial this is medial then the caudal abdomen usually this medial person the slightly caudal of the cranial person and this medial person will find these characteristics of hazy or mottled radiograph then it, you may suspect it might be peritonitis focal peritonitis or the pancreatitis you have to do the lab test to establish there is whether there is pancreatitis or no pancreatitis is normally not visible okay so it you may on the pancreatitis and peritonitis can coexist okay so this is peritoneal effusion when there is small amount of effusion next we will see the moderate amount you see this is moderate amount of peritoneal effusion what is mod in case of moderate you will find loss of serosal detail you cannot identify the organs loss of serosal detail especially the peritoneal space peritoneal space here see the retroperitoneum is intact okay the retroperitoneum is clearly visible kidneys are clearly visible this is fat opacity this is clearly visible okay but the perit here this is falciform this is x ray of cat this is falciform which is uh, falciform fat which is retroperitoneal that is also clearly visible okay but the peritoneal space see this is peritoneal space it is not clearly visible some loops are visible only because they contain gas but you cannot identify the liver cannot identify the stomach although the stomach contains some gas that is why it is visible okay but the spleen is not visible here the cranial end you should find the head of the spleen in case of cat tail is not visible in normally so all those structures inside the peritoneal cavity the serosal detail is lost okay but you can still identify the retroperitoneal cavity and the peritoneal cavity this is moderate amount of fluid accumulation in the peritoneum okay so uh, you will find this kind of radiograph okay next we will see whether in large amount of when there will be large amount of fluids so basically the ascites okay so here 
there is some characteristics you won't differentiate between the retroperitoneal and the peritoneal cavity not because that retroperitoneal contains fluid but because the peritoneal fluid is so large the volume is so large it is superimposed on the retroperitoneal space that is why you can't identify the retroperitoneal space so the entire abdomen is soft tissue opacity when there will be fluid accumulation the fat opacity will change to soft tissue as all the organs are soft tissue and uh, the fluid contents is soft tissue so nothing will be visible okay the fat actually provides a contrast medium through which you, you will be seeing the soft tissue opacity different organs if at all all are soft tissue opacity nothing will be visible there are some characteristics when there will be large amount of fluid will be accumulated especially the intestines okay the loops of intestine which will be containing the gas they will float up okay usually they will be located centrally okay float up here you, this is stomach stomach is fixed by the lesser omentum and the greater omentum okay the stomach will not come to the central portion but the special the jejunums okay those intestines which contain gas they will float up and will be in central position if this phenomena is not followed suppose there is some gas here or here what will happen what are those cases let us see a radiograph this is a radiograph okay here this is also loss soft tissue of entire abdomen but here some jejunum folds are here you can see at some central location but see here some gas some gas here okay so what can this be two possibilities first there might be some mass okay some mass any organ it can involve any organ here it, the organs are not visible because of soft tissue opacities so might be there might be some tumor here or mass here which is which pushing the intestine to other locations okay first possibility second possibility is there might be adhesion as there is peritoneal disc there is every possibility that uh, the intestine will get adhered let us see in the bd you see here are some gas usually they are not centrally located here are some gas okay gas filled intestines so this is the most probable case of adhesion okay uh, this can be confirmed by ultrasonography some things are limited by the uh, radiograph so you have to go for the ultrasonography for better diagnosis okay but here you can at least diagnosis that this, there is peritoneal effusion that might be peritonitis and also the gas filled intestines are non central in location so there might be due to non central location there might be some mass or some adhesion okay this case particularly was of adhesion okay so this is the peritonitis especially the peritoneal effusion the cause is peritonitis next peritoneal metastasis or sti and steatitis peritoneal metastasis means there is some uh, tumor okay that has been metastasized to the peritoneum the most common one is for which there will be metastasis is hemangiosarcoma hemangiosarcoma this happens in the organ spleen hemangiosarcoma of spleen as if the name is sarcoma it is malignant form and it will metastasize to nearby organs most probably most commonly peritoneum and the mesentery mesentery is not but nothing but the peritoneum also. okay so in that case you will find the x ray to be granular granular other names are miliary or irregular it is kind of same like the mottled and hazy but you will find some granules okay these are granular structures okay so thing is there is some conspicuity between these special the granular pattern and the uh, mottled or hazy especially in the focal peritonitis okay so those may confuse those should be diagnosed with ultrasonography okay but if you are finding clear cut granular structures then you may tell that uh, peritoneum is having some metastasis also you will find same picture for steatitis steatitis uh, is basically the inflammation of the fat especially the mesenteric fat this is very common when 
the cause most common cause is pancreatitis i already told you in case of pancreatitis you will find motored and hazy radiograph especially in the you see this is stomach the from starting from the caudal portion of this cranial abdomen okay caudal portion of this cranial abdomen and the mid abdomen okay so this is pan uh, peritoneal metastasis and steatitis this type of radiograph you will find but it should also be diagnosed with ultrasonography or confirmatory diagnosis should be done by ultrasonography if you do not have ultrasonography machine you can rely on this radiograph also and uh, you have to perform other tests also by doing the pathology lab test and uh, correlating with the radiograph you can reach in the confirmatory diagnosis peritoneal mass there are very very uncommon uh, usually they are diagnosed by the ultrasonography not by radiography they are very very uncommon next the retroperitoneal fluid okay i have already done with peritoneal effusion peritoneal fluid now let us go to retroperitoneal the most common cause of retroperitoneal fluid is hemorrhage the most common cause is hemorrhage and this hemorrhage happens due to trauma maybe there is some accident vehicular trauma or any kind of trauma you will find hemorrhage into the retroperitoneal space unlike the peritoneal effusion in, in which you will find exudate or transudate okay not exudate transudate okay but here most of the time it will be containing the blood hemorrhage so the characteristic pattern which is known for uh, specific for retroperitoneal fluid is streaky appearance streaky it means alternative opacities alternative opacity of fat and soft tissue here you see this portion is soft tissue opacity now here the slightly fat opacity then the soft tissue opacity this streaking is known as the uh, can be diagnosed as presence of retroperitoneal fluid okay let us see another uh, radiograph also here you can see you can though you can slightly identify the kidney but the degree to which it should be identified clear is lost okay when there is a fluid in the retroperitoneal space everything will be of soft tissue opacity okay let us see another radiograph this is a radiograph this is, is a radiograph of a dog which has gone some vehicular accident okay this is retroperitoneal space actually here you will find retroperitoneal space everything is of soft tissue opacity this is left side this is right side right side you can identify some organs but not on left side so it is evident that the fluid has been accumulated in the left retroperitoneal space here you see this streaking okay this is of some opacity and there is a line then after all there is soft tissue okay this line is fat opacity lesser opacity okay fat is comparatively less radio lucent or radio opaque sorry less radio opaque okay this is known as streaking okay and see everything all the the retroperitoneal space the every uh, organ that is present in retroperitoneal space mostly the kidneys which can be easily diagnosed are not visible okay you cannot identify the retroperitoneal space organs okay everything is of soft tissue opacity mostly the soft tissue opacity and also you will find that due to this okay here is the descending colon the descending colon is slightly pushed ventrally okay by this you can also diagnose some things okay you have to know here see the jejunums are cranially migrated okay these jejunums are very very important and they will give you that where is the problem okay in which organ there will be problem so this is a retroperitoneal fluid they are also uncommon not so common retroperitoneal mass is also uncommon but uh, you may find retroperitoneal mass most uh, you know, commonly you will find the lipoma lipoma is the most common cause for the retroperitoneal mass when there will be mass the mass is of soft tissue opacity under the fat opacity retroperitoneal fat which provides the fat opacity you will find some soft tissue opacity which is basically the retroperitoneal mass okay there are not any radiographs in the book also but it is very very uncommon now peritoneal gas okay if there is some Yeah, the most common cause of peritoneal gas is trauma. Okay, some penetration into the peritoneal cavity, or you have done some surgery. Okay, for this, 
there is specific technique or uh, fast technique to identify this peritoneal gas normally what you do is the vertical beam x-ray patient here is a table here will be the patient and you do the vertical x-ray but for this you need a horizontal x-ray same machine can be adjusted to the horizontal position so you need a horizontal x-ray why because whatever the gas present in peritoneal space usually they will migrate to the suppose this is right side this is left side okay patient is sleeping in the right lateral recumbency so the gas will migrate to the left side and will be accumulated here usually for this technique i told you you need horizontal x-ray beam okay also it should be animal should be put under left recumbency why because under right lateral recumbency the fundus here will be the fundus which normally contains gas so you will get confused between this whether this is fundus gas or whether this is the peritoneal gas okay so you need left lateral recumbency okay here this is a left lateral recumbency and uh, it is the x-ray is taken by horizontal beam radiography so can you see the air column here this is air column some air okay so the, all the airs will go up and they will coalesce to form a bigger bubble or bigger area where the gas is accumulated this uh, is also in dorsoventral sorry this is ha uh, dorsoventral position but the x ray has been taken horizontally this x ray was from just after surgery abdominal surgery okay so you can clearly see this air okay peritoneal air peritoneal gas actually okay this is peritoneal gas this is how you can identify if you are suspecting peritoneal gas then you have to do the horizontal beam radiography along with left lateral recumbency okay not right lateral next retroperitoneal gas just like peritoneal gas this is very very rare very very uncommon but you can find this gas opacity this is gas opacity okay the gas is present in the retroperitoneal space most common cause is stroma okay if there is some penetrating wound then air may enter into this another thing i told uh, forgot to tell about regarding the peritoneal gas okay sometimes many a times when there will be trauma there will be subcutaneous emphysema okay so when there will be subcutaneous emphysema it is very difficult to diagnose whether the air is present inside the peritoneum or not because they because of the superimposition okay you have to keep that in your mind next intra abdominal mineral opacity here one thing we have not included especially in this case that is the mineral opacity inside the git sometimes there will be foreign body okay suppose the bone which is mineral opacity okay or the bone opacity or metals have metal opacity i am not considering those okay this is outside the git okay outside the git the not the foreign body most probable cause or the most common cause for the increased abdominal mineral opacity <coughs> is the calcification of calcification of necrotic fats necrotic fats this mineralization is usually found in case of cat normally you can find in cat which is clinically insignificant no it is not that found in case of dogs but in some cats you may find the mineralization of this necrotizing fat inside the abdomen especially the mesenteric fat and you may find some structures like this but they are clinically insignificant if they are not causing any problems with them okay next we will go for the abdominal wall okay so the abdominal wall can be uh, evaluated in lateral radiographs as well as the dorsal ventral or ventral dorsal radiograph in lateral radiograph you will be evaluating the ventral wall okay in ventral dorsal you will be evaluating the lateral walls okay so by this you can diagnose many things okay most important one can you guess is hernia okay the most important one is hernia by this you can identify is there any abnormality or rupture of the musculature or the wall hernia and also you can uh, identify the subcutaneous abscesses or suture dehiscence especially the musculature suture dehiscence 
okay like this you can identify okay here this is a dorsometral radiograph okay or ventrodorsal radiograph can you identify this organ this is plain okay so here see this wall this wall is intact but see the here this wall this is left side this is right side this is right wall this is rock chord and some intestine loops are inside this uh, beneath the skin here is the skin okay beneath the skin but the musculature is ruptured okay so this is case of hernia okay here can you say which hernia is this this is also a hernia okay this is the abdominal wall ventral wall in the dorsoventral you will you will be evaluating the lateral walls in lateral radiograph you will you will evaluating the ventral wall okay this is os penis this is case of dog and here you will find some can you see these intestinal loops okay can you tell which hernia is this this is inguinal hernia okay in this inguinal region there is hernia inguinal hernia okay the intestine is coming through like this here is going this is inguinal canal and here is the intestine okay this is inguinal hernia this is how you can identify the abdominal wall abnormalities from the x ray or radiograph okay now the abdominal lymph nodes i told you the lymph nodes are retroperitoneal okay so the lymph nodes there are two category of lymph nodes the parietal lymph nodes the parietal lymph nodes and also the visceral lymph nodes you don't need to remember all the lymph nodes but one particular lymph nodes or some set of lymph nodes are very very important that is medial iliac lymph node medial iliac lymph node because this is the only lymph node when enlarged it can be visible in the radiograph okay all other lymph nodes all lymph nodes are not visible on the radiographs but especially this one it is visible when sufficiently enlarged okay so medial iliac lymph node lies beneath l6 and the l7 this is l7 this is l6 here it lies okay when they are enlarged you will find soft tissue opacity mass mass with soft tissue opacity here you can see here okay this enlargement of medial iliac lymph node okay usually it involves tumor okay in of a medial iliac lymph node another thing see the this is descending colon see the descending colon has been pushed this is ventral side towards ventral side okay so you, by this you can tell that the medial iliac lymph node is swollen some other pictures you see here this is soft tissue opacity here okay and the descending colon is slightly pushed here you see the descending colon is further pushed this is a very big soft tissue opacity very big tumor of medial iliac lymph node okay so this is the only lymph node which is visible remember its position just beneath or just ventral to the l6 and l7 when it is will be enlarged the descending colon will be pushed ventral okay and the opacity is usually soft tissue opacity here this is a fat opacity this soft tissue opacity here you see this is fat opacity here some fat opacity this is soft tissue opacity also here this is fat opacity here is the soft tissue opacity okay that is the lymph nodes next we will go to the pancreas pancreas uh, you should know some anatomy pancreas has two limbs okay suppose this is the ventrodorsal view so it has a left limb and also a right limb right limb lies adjacent to the duodenum while the left limb lies here will be the stoma and here will be the transverse colon in between the stoma and the transverse colon you will find the pancreas normally in dogs you won't find the pancreas okay but in case of obese cats when the cat is highly obese you may find the specially the left limb can you see here a or this okay this is the left limb of pancreas here is the transverse colon this is transverse colon okay left limb of pancreas can you tell which organ is this this organ 
this is spleen okay this is the position of spleen so pancreas is usually not visible in x ray only in case of cats which is who is highly obese you may find some some sites of pancreas but normally it is not visible you should go for ultrasonography to evaluate the pancreas okay so in case of pancreatitis i already told you before it will have a mottled and hedgy especially the cranial the caudal portion of cranial abdomen and the mid abdomen okay that you may suspect for pancreatitis but you have to do the blood work okay to correlate between the pancreatitis next adrenal gland adrenal gland is normally not visible in radiographs it will be only visible when there will be mineralization or it is larger than a study suggests that when it is larger than 2 cm then after it will be visible otherwise it is it will not be visible in case of dogs okay so here this is dorsoventral can you see some mineralization here okay this is so this is right kidney okay here is right kidney left kidney okay here is some mineralization that is the mineralization of the adrenal gland in the lateral radiograph you can see clearly here is one mineralization here is one mineralization okay so those are basically the adrenal glands here is one kidney okay and here is another kidney so you will find the adrenal glands in the radiograph only when sorry only when you will the gland is enlarged beyond 2 cm according to some research and if they have some mineralization let us see another radiograph you will appreciate this one see here this is a large tumor okay with mineralization this is okay here you see in the dorsoventral radiograph here okay so the adrenal gland usually not visible it is better to go for ultrasonography to evaluate the adrenal glands okay if some you are uh, suspecting some thing which involves adrenal gland it is always a good practice go for ultrasonography okay normal x ray you may not find next we will go for the liver okay first some normal anatomy uh, i have discussed normal anatomy of liver in the abdominal radiograph video okay if you have not watched the video please go that go and see those that video first okay but i will give some summary the normally the liver resides inside the costal arch this is costal arch this is costal arch but the cordo ventral margin of the liver left liver will protrude beyond the costal arch okay it is a triangular in shape and the margins are very very sharp okay see the margin is very sharp the sharp margin is very very important when we are discussing the hepatomega here is the spleen okay this is the tail of the spleen here is the head this is head this is a radiograph of a dog here is a kidney okay now this is cat in case of cat due to presence of falciform fat usually the ventral border of the liver suppose looks elevated okay some distance between the abdominal wall and the liver here you can you see this cordo ventral margin this is a triangular shape and it has very sharp margin very sharp margin here is the spleen we will be discussing spleen that is why i am showing you the spleen this is the head of the spleen tail of the spleen is not visible in case of cat if it is visible in case of cat there might be some pathologies most probably the spleno megaly so this is the normal thing about the liver another thing to measure the whether the liver is enlarged or liver is small in the abdominal radiograph i already discussed regarding the gastric axis let me slightly remind you so here is the stomach okay this is the pylorus you have to draw a line from the fundus to the pylorus this line should be perpendicular to the spine or be parallel to the this ribs okay in between these it varies okay suppose this axis is moved towards caudal side that means liver is enlarged if it is moving towards the cranial side that means liver is smaller this is one method okay this is fast method fast method is gastric axis next next method is you have to draw a line see here is the caudal vena cava here is the caudal vena cava caudal vena cava 
okay going to the diaphragm you have to draw a line from the cordo ventral caudal margin caudal caudal extreme point of cordo ventral margin this is cordo ventral margin this is caudal most point so from this point you have to draw a line to the ventral border sorry to the ventral border of this vena cava caudal vena cava okay to the ventral border. this line okay it should and uh, you have to draw another line that is the width of the t11 l6 i think 5 4 3 2 1 t13 t12 and t11 suppose okay there is some whatever uh, there is, might be might not be i'm just for your example i'm telling you so you have to me take measurement of this length of the t11 okay so this length usually in normal cases it should be 5.4 to 5.5 times okay this length this length should be 5.4 to 5.5 times of this t11 length normal if it is much more than it does not mean that if it is coming 5.7 it is enlarged you have to look for other signs also i will tell you okay so the normally you may find the 5.4 to 5.5 times in case of brachycephalic bills it can go as low as 5.16 according to one research this is second point okay you have to take a ratio of this line to t11 third is you have to look how much or the this cordo ventral margin to which extent it is coming beyond this costal arch we will see some radiographs also and also third is extension how much it is extending beyond the costal arch fourth one is rounding of those borders okay if it, you are finding all these parameters that suggest hepatomegaly okay in favor of hepatomegaly then you should diagnose hepatomegaly because in normal cases also liver size varies very uh, you can say between the species uh, between the breeds liver size varies okay this is very random so you need all those point to be satisfied to declare it as hepatomegaly let us see some radiographs of hepatomegaly see these are the pictures of hepato megal sorry sorry this is gall bladder okay before going to pathology normally you should see the gall bladder you see gall bladder is normally not visible it is only visible in cats who are very much obese okay in obese cats also you may not find the gall bladder but sometimes it is visible like this cat this is liver you will find a soft tissue thing which is hanging from this ventral margin okay let me wipe this one okay this one there is a arrow mark this one okay so this is gall bladder this is in case of cat in case of dog it is not at all visible okay here it is visible only because it is having some contrast agent okay the iodine red con contrast medium the secondary root is biliary excretion okay so due to that you are visualizing the gall bladder but normally it is not at all visible let us go to our pathology so this is case on these are the radiographs of the hepatomegaly see this is hepatomegaly first i told you gastric gases this is gastric gases you have to draw a line okay so it is slightly caudal okay this these are the ribs so instead of being parallel slightly caudal see this may happen in normal cases also this line is also perpendicular to the spine so you may not declare it as hepatomegaly but there are some other features second i told you if you will draw the line from this to caudal vena cava here the caudal vena cava is not clearly visible but if at all visible then if you will draw you can clearly say that it is more than 5.5 times second third i told you the extension you see it is way beyond the costal arch way beyond the costal arch okay this portion third point satisfy fourth i told you rounding see these are rounding of the margins this is rounding of the margins okay so all those points in favor of hepatomegaly the most common cause for the hepatomegaly is steroid hepatopathy steroid hepatopathy okay if the animal is receiving steroids for long period of time you may find some hepatic enlargement normal okay so here you see the dorsal ventral view this is lateral view this dorsal ventral view this is the liver okay see this liver okay here you can say 
this is right side this is left side the right lobes are used is enlarged okay so here is the stoma okay here is the stoma here is the pylorus circum and this is the stoma stoma is slightly pushed caudal okay and here is the spleen see this spleen this triangular spleen it is head of the spleen okay here is also the tail is also visible this is the tail of spleen this is the head of the spleen okay so this is hepatomegaly i told you you should look for those four points then after they will give diagnosis of hepatomegaly here another case of hepatomegaly here it is not visible okay you can't tell from the this hepatomegaly because all the opacities or the serosal detail is lost because this animal is having peritoneal effusion peritoneal effusion you see the retroperitoneal space is normal okay this is retroperitoneal space is normal only the peritoneal space is containing fluids that is why the serosal detail is lost but here you see the stomach this stomach is cran sorry dorsally pushed here the stomach is dorsally pushed. normally it should be like this but it is pushed dorsally so there is must be something here which is causing this push also the jejunum is pushed caudally i told you jejunum is very very important it can give you diagnosis good diagnosis okay so there must be something also the opacity of the liver is slightly increased here also so there must be something here what thing lies here it is liver so you can tell that the liver is enlarged this is a case of hepatomegaly along with the peritoneal effusion this is dorsoventral see here the stomach is pushed and also the pylorus is pushed towards the left side pylorus is should be in right side okay so this is a right lobe enlargement this is the right lobe of the liver is enlarged the intestines is also pushed caudal especially the jejunum and also note one thing here all the gas filled intestines are in central location this is descending duodenum eh uh, sorry descending colon colon is fixed okay so this is jejunum which is central location you may tell that there isn't any adhesion but you should go for ultrasonography before declaring regarding the adhesion but normally in this particular case there was not any adhesion the only the liver enlargement okay by this position of the stomach position of this pylorus position of the jejunum you can tell that whether the liver is enlarged or not next next is hepatic mass okay the hepatic mass can be left hepatic mass or the left lobe uh, when involved and the right hepatic mass right lobe is involved okay so this is a case of this is left lobe okay left lobe enlargement okay this is left lobe mass here is the left lobe mass okay you see liver is extending beyond the costal arch there is a rounding of the liver okay and uh, these are the kidneys here one kidney one kidney okay the right kidney is slightly pushed back okay and remember i told you about the stomach here you see the stomach and here is the pylorus okay so the pylorus is dorsally pushed okay so you have to look for those things here you see this is the stomach and pylorus is at the middle it should be on the right okay so this mass is pushing something also there is some mass here also which is pushing this stomach okay by this you can diagnose here you see the left kidney this is the left side this is the right side okay here the left kidney it is slightly pushed caudally because of this liver mass okay this is the left low liver mass okay left liver mass or a mass in the left lobes of a liver another thing the right lobe there is sorry this one here you see in dorsoventral like you can identify the with the left or right this is the lobe see this stomach here this is the stomach the pylorus here it is further towards the this is towards left side you know, pylorus should be on the 
right side okay so you can say that some bigger left mass is there in the liver which is pushing this stomach here in lateral view you see the pylorus is pushed towards up towards dorsal side okay here you see the mass okay so this might be the liver mass it may be tumor it may be abscess it may be cyst anything there is some mass present in the liver okay see the intestines are also pushed back and there is some peritoneal effusion okay because the serosal detail is not that clear okay you see here also you cannot identify the intestinal loop some serosal detail is lost you can say that there is liver enlargement along with peritoneal effusion okay in radiographs usually the things are interpreted you are not supposed to diagnose the disease okay you cannot tell that oh it may be some hepatic sorry you can only tell that hepatic enlargement is there whether it is due to infectious canine hepatitis or anything other viral infection or bacterial infection, you can tell that okay so you you have to interpret the radiograph like that what are your findings only okay next is microhepatica i told you a gastric abscess see here the stomach here is the pylorus if you, i will draw the gastric abscess it should be parallel but it has moved cranial so it means the liver is smaller in this case okay this happens when there will be chronic hepatitis chronic hepatitis or cirrhosis in those cases you will find small liver cirrhosis okay now here you see the stomach is nearly towards the diaphragm okay towards the cranial side where the liver should be present okay so now you know how to diagnose the hepatomegaly mostly and also the hepatic small liver that is micro hepatic next hepatic mineral opacity this usually find you will find in case of gall bladder stones okay there are two uh, cases first one is gall bladder stone which is known as cholelith cholelith and also you may find mineralization of the gall bladder ducts bile ducts okay that is cholle docolith cholle docolith this is a case where both cholelith and cholle docolith is there this is cholelith single big stone which is present in the gall bladder okay this is the cholelith but can you see these tracts okay these are biliary tracts okay which is mineralized cholle docolith okay mineralization of this Uh, gall bladder ducts here can you see this mineralization here also some other structures which are not liver usually in this case in the book in the book it is written also the pancreatic duct was mineralized okay but normally in normal case you may tell that whether that is cholelith or cholle docolith okay if you are finding some tracts with mineralization that cholle docolith you will find single stone or some multiple stones at the ventral border of this liver okay you may find you can tell that this is a case of cholelith okay this is cholelith here the gall bladder resides just right to the midline this is right hand side to this midline the gall bladder lies here okay if in dorsal ventral wave so this is all about cholelith and cholo docolith next is hepatic gas opacity you see hepatic gas opacity is present when there will be hepatic abscess or tumor with central area of necrosis but they are best diagnosed in ultrasonography many times they are confused with stomach gases okay but this is a case of irregular gas pattern okay irregular opacities of liver this is a case of liver with gas opacity this is a case of abscess but they are better diagnosed here in dv view you can see the here okay but they are confused with the stomach sometimes okay so it is better evaluated ultrasonography but you may find in radiograph also okay next is spleen i told you about spleen in the lateral radiographs this is dorsal ventral radiograph this is dog this is cat okay in case of dog i told you both head and the tail can be visible 
many times tail is visible head is not that visible but in case of cat only the head is visible in lateral edega tail is not at all visible if it is visible then it there might be some splenomegaly this is dorsal ventral view in dorsal ventral view you will find this is spleen head this is dog in case of cat spleen is comparatively thinner and the entire spleen can be visualized this is the spleen of a cat in cat due to presence of mesenteric fat they are very nicely visualized all the organs are very nicely visualized in case of a cat okay so this is normal spleen let us uh, go to the pathology the pathology is splenomegaly okay you can only diagnose splenomegaly from the radiograph see here splenomegaly okay i told you the splenic margin is usually triangular and they are very sharp here you can see the spleen is enlarged along with the rounding of the border this is rounding of the borders okay this is rounding of the borders splenomegaly this is also a case of splenomegaly you see here this is rounding of the borders splenic sign is also in, enlarged okay so this is these are the cases of splenomegaly now another thing is splenic torsion this is a case of splenic torsion splenic torsion is happens when it rotates along its the mesenteric axis there are some radiographic findings you may find in what reverse c shape sorry reverse c shape of spleen or a mass in the abdomen mass in the ventral abdomen it looks like a mass in the ventral abdomen okay another thing it is usually find in case of when there will be gastric dilatation and valvulus okay usually it is found along with gdv i will discuss about gdv when we will be reading the stomach x ray pathology of the stomach here you see this is spleen and another thing it will, you will find spleen in atypical locations atypical locations see spleen is usually you will find at the ventral wall okay here will be liver next to liver will be pylorus then there will be spleen but here you see the spleen okay it goes up like this this is atypical location for spleen and this is reverse c shape okay this is reverse c shape okay and here see compartmentalization of the stomach here is one compartment is another compartment this is gdv gastric dilatation and bulbous we will discuss gdv when we will be reading this stomach here you see this is also a case of gdv see there is one compartment there is another compartment this is compartmentalization of the stomach this is also gdv here it is a mass it will be here you see this spleen okay usually it is found in case of the gdv splenic torsion many times when these are not corrected in time you will find the growth of the gas forming bacteria resulting in a foamy x ray okay this is foamy x ray of spleen okay this is foamy okay the radiographic pattern is foamy so this happens when there will be gas producing bacteria inside the spleen happens in case of splenic torsion okay now the splenic mass you see regarding the splenic mass i told you spleen has a head and a tail head is fixed but tail is mobile comparatively more mobile okay so all those passes will be happening in the tail okay very very rare you will find head mass in the head but most of the time you will find the mass in the tail here you see this is spleen okay this is the head of the spleen this is the tail of the spleen okay another thing when you will find tumor in the tail of the spleen see the jejunum all the jejunum are cranially post and ventrally post here see here is the spleen head and here is the tail okay the tumor of the tail the jejunums are post this is right side this is left side towards the right side okay spleen is present in the left side when you will take two views it is very easy to diagnose things okay always prefer i told you three view is way better than the two view right lateral left lateral and ventral dorsal otherwise you can go for the right lateral and the ventral dorsal okay 
so this is this plenic tumor another picture there is another radiograph regarding this plenic mass here here there is plenic mass along with peritoneal or peritonitis resulting in peritoneal effusion okay all these structures are not easily visible in the inside the peritoneum but the retroperitoneum is fine okay so here is some mass slightly visible okay here is some mass here let us go to the db view see here is the mass okay but the spleen is not clearly visible because of the peritonitis the gas filled structures are visible only but other things other details are lost okay so there is peritoneal effusion it may be due to peritonitis along with some mass most probably the splenic mass okay for this you can also go for ultrasonography which is way better any sub evaluation of soft tissue ultrasonography is better than the radiograph okay but if you do not have ultrasonography machine you can rely on the radiograph in some aspects so this is all about the peritoneal space liver and uh, spleen okay or the, along with some other organs like pancreas abdominal wall okay adrenal gland like that okay so next we will go for some other pathologies most probably we will be starting the gits so till then tata bye bye take care